Hello, and welcome to my YouTube channel. Please ensure to like, share, and subscribe. And also click the bell notification in the top right hand corner to be made aware anytime I upload tutorials or videos to YouTube. Alright, let's craft together. Guys, today I am going to show you a, another way that you can get prompts to use for Creative Fabrica. And I'm also going to show you how you can generate digital images inside of Canva. So we're going to kill two birds with one stone today in this video tutorial. So bear with me. It's going to be a little bit lengthy, but trust me, you're going to know all that you need to know with Creative Fabrica, Spark, and Canva when it comes to generating digital, digital images. And we're going to have the AI prompt um, as you can see display here on my screen, we're going to have it to help us with some um, prompts, okay? All right, so <clears throat> this AI generator, let me turn my volume up a little bit here. This, sorry about that. This AI prompt uh, generator will create prompts for you. Um, now you can't tell it what prompts to generate it's going to you just click on this generate prompt here and it's going to automatically put a prompt here that you can then copy and you can paste it into um the search field on some of these digital images or ai software okay so this one is actually created for dali and mid journey and stable diffusion um which are different prompt generators, but you can use it, like I said, for Creative Fabrica and Canva. So it's not specifically just for these. Okay. So the way you use this, you can see what you put in AI prompt.io forward slash pound. And it's going to um, bring up your website for you. You don't have to log in or anything like that. At the bottom of the screen, you're going to have prompt examples. And you could actually copy any of these that you would like and create um, your own digital images. Now, one good thing about digital images is that no one is going to have the exact same image. So I can use that prompt and other people can use that prompt. It will create images in the likeness of, but not one of them will be the same. Okay. So you can rest assured that when you're generating these digital images, that yours is not going to be like anyone else's, regardless to if you're using the same keywords. OK, to get back to the top. After you scroll to the bottom, you can just click here on AI prompt. It's going to take you back to the top until instead of you having to scroll. And so all you do, very simple, is you just click on generate prompt. It's going to place a prompt here. It says, at the edge of dimensional portal, expansive interior gardens, nat nature, uh, nature growing, whimsical fantasy, magic, crystal trees, waterfalls, etc." So that's the prompt. You don't have to do this to copy it, okay? You just click here, and that's going to copy it, and it'll tell you that it's copied it to the clipboard. So your clip, it's on your clipboard now, so all you have to do is go to your... AI software and put that prompt in. So we're going to start out with Creative Fabrica. So when you go to Creative Fab Fabrica, it's actually Fabrica, um, Spark, you click on Create Art, but in the States we say Fabrica <laughs> in the US. And then you just take and you paste that prompt in. I'm going to click and paste. And so now that, pa that prompt is now I'm going to generate art, digital art, and creative um, spark, CF spark. Once you put the prompt in, you can change the ratio and you have all these different options. I'm going to leave it on one to one and I'm going to click on ignite. And you're going to get four images here based off of this prompt. Okay, so these are your images that have generated 
based off of that particular AI prompt. So you can see that you can use the AI prompt to help you get some really pretty images without you having to try to think of what do you want to type in, especially if you're not really good at trying to come up with keywords to use. This is a great tool to use. The AI prompt generator is a great tool to use to help you out. Once you get comfortable, then you'll be able to change up some of these keywords based on what it is you're truly looking for or that you want to do, okay? What I'm going to do is take that same prompt. I'm going to go over to Canva. Now, Canva also, um, you can create digital art. The way you do that is this is the home page of your Canva and you just go to canva.com. I have an account so <clears throat> I can go in and generate this digital art using text to image. Um, do keep in mind that if you're using the free versions of either one of these, you may be limited in what you can do um, based on what I'm actually saying. So I actually have a CF Spark. Uh, membership. So I pay $9 a month for Spark. It is additional to your Creative Fabrica. This is not the same or they're not inclusive. Okay. So you can get all of this minus Spark for monthly or yearly membership, but Spark is separate. Okay. So you have to pay an additional $9 for Spark. All right. That being said, I'm going to go back to Canva. And to get to the text to image, I'm just going to go over to Discover Apps here on the left. And some of the popular apps are going to display here at the top. And then it's going to go from new, so on and so forth. So we're just going to click here where it says text to image. It's going to pop up this window, uh, text to image window. You can use uh, in an existing design if you're already designing something. Or you can use in a new design. So we're going to click that. And we're going to just say a Facebook post. <clears throat> All right, so when Canva comes up, you're going to see something similar to CF Spark. You're going to have your search field. This is where you're going to take, put your prompt in. You also have some inspiration to kind of help you out with um, ways to generate your prompts. And then you can choose the style. Now, this is the only thing that's different from Sea of Spark. Sea of Spark, you don't get to choose the style, but you can type in in the style of in your keyword. So if I wanted to put in a style, I could come here and say in the style of Charlie Bowater. Okay, and that's an artist. And then I could ignite. And when it's saying generating, it's just getting your four images. It's always going to give you four images. Every now and again, there's a little fluke in the system, and you may get one that's not, uh, that didn't display. But don't sweat it. Just keep it moving. So you can see now when we add in the style of Charlie Bowater, you can see what generates. Okay, similar, but a little bit different. It put an uh, actual person um, into the picture now when we did in the style of Charlie Bowater. Okay, very pretty. Now, when you're in CF Spark, you can click on this um, down arrow and it's gonna give you two options. You can publish and hide your prompt or you can generate a private download, okay? So if you don't want anyone to see what prompt you used, then you just click this one. And if you don't really care, you can just click publish and then people will be able to see what prompt you used when you created that image. I'm going to show you really quickly and then we'll go back over to Canva. So bear with me. We're going to be going back and forth <clears throat> between Canva and CF Spark. So while that is generating, you'll be able to see here in a moment when you um, click on just publish, then Anyone that uses CF Spark will be able to see what prompt you use to create that image that you just published. And like I said, if you don't want people to see your prompts, then you can click on the down arrow and select publish and hide prompt. And then they will only see like part of the name. 
but they won't see everything that you've typed in. Now, you may ask, why would I want to hide the prompt from others? There's times that CF Spark will have a contest going on where you can win, you know, up to $100,000 based on who, uh, what creator had the most downloads on their images. And so that's one of the reasons people hide their prompts. And some just hide them because they just don't want you to know. Okay. Um, with CF Spark, if you have the monthly membership, they're going to give you 1,000 speed credits per month. And once they're gone, they're gone. You have to wait till the next month. Every now and again, they may have where they will offer you additional speed credits for a certain dollar amount, but that's every once in a while. It's not a given. Now that that image has um, been saved to our private downloads or up under My Creations, now I can click on My Creations. And you'll see that image here. Now, when I click on it from here, these are all the images that I have generated up under CF Spark. Okay. And you can see it is a whopping 8,525 images in here. So when I click on this image now, it's going to show me the prompt that I, along with the image, it's going to show me the prompt that I used. So I can never forget the prompt because it's going to be shown right up under your image. Is you can post any projects that you've created. Like if you put this image on a t-shirt, you can take a picture of the t-shirt and then um, post that t-shirt picture here to show other crafters what you've created with that particular image. You can go in and you can add comments. And you can also go in and here up under prompt views. Right now it's visible to everyone. If you meant to hide it, you just click on the down arrow and say prompt visible only to me. Okay, but if you don't care, you just leave it like it is. If you want to use this prompt again and you want it to automatically put that prompt in the search field for you, you click here. If you want to copy that prompt to the clipboard and then you go and paste it into the search field, then you click here. Once you get to this area, it's going to give you a lot of good information. You can download it. Um, you can view any related content to this particular image. You can see, um, you can add it to your favorites. You can see how many others have added it and, you know, placed comments and things like that. You can share it with your friends via any of this social media. You can copy this link to share that image directly with others if you want to do it that way. And then if you're looking at another creator's work, you can follow them right here just by clicking on follow. Okay. Or you can view their profile by clicking here. And then lastly, if you generated this image, if you published it and you didn't mean to, then you can come here and remove this listing, okay? All right, so that's all I'm going to say about that. Uh, I will say that you will be able to see below your image. You'll be able to see other images that are similar to the one that you just created. Um, you will notice that a lot of these, the prompts are going to be hidden. So you see it says this prompt is hidden by the creator. So sometimes you'll see some that are not hidden, but for the most part, most of them are hidden. And if I were to click on one of these, I'm only going to see a portion of the title, but I don't see the complete prompt that uh, was actually used. Okay, so this is someone that has hidden their prompt. If I wanted to follow them, then I can click here. Okay, you can download, anyone can download your work in CF Spark. Okay, anyone. The only way you can avoid that is in CF Spark. I'm going to close this out. In CF Spark, you can do a download, generate a private download. When you generate a private download, it's going to show up under your private downloads, and no one will be able to see those but you. Okay. So if you want others to be able to see your downloads, and if they don't have a CF Spark account and they download your image, they have to pay for it. And you do get a portion of that if you have an affiliate account with CF Spark. I'll talk about that one day on another tutorial. Um, but once this generates, it's going to show up under my private downloads. Now, this option is new. It's not something that CF Spark had previously, but they just updated their database, and this was another update. So CF Spark is constantly changing for the better. So far, I really like it, and I hope you will too. Um, you can tell I really like it because I have over eight. 8,000 images out here. It's very addictive, guys. Once you get out here and get the 
the hang of it, you're going to see it's very addictive. Um, once you run out of speed credit, credits, when you generate an image uh, or when you go into Ignite, you're going to be placed in a queue and it'll tell you what number you are before your image is going to be generated. Because I have speed credits, mine come up immediately and I'm not placed into the queue like that. Okay. So that's the difference between having speed credits and not having speed credits. If you're using the free version of CF Spark, you don't get speed credits and you're not able to download these two. Okay, so we're waiting for this to generate so I can show you that it's gonna show up under your private downloads. And remember I said this is new, so I don't have anything under my private downloads because this is something they just started. Now, what would be nice if they will allow us to migrate these from our um, my creations over to private downloads? That would be amazing. So we're going to go back here. We're going to go to my creations. I mean, create. I'm sorry. We're going to go to create, and it's going to generate here. And I'm going to move on, but. That's the difference between my creations and my private downloads. My creations, anyone can click, anyone can see your downloads, anyone can click to download your work. My private downloads, they will not, others will not be able to see those downloads. They're only visible to you, okay? So that's the difference. I'm gonna keep moving here. We're gonna go back over to our Canva. And we're gonna take, and we're gonna put that prompt in from the AI generator that we got earlier. If you clicked off of it or lost it, all you have to do is just copy it again. And I'm gonna go back to Canva. And now I'm gonna type that, or not type that prompt in, but paste it in. Canva limits you on the number of digits that can be placed in their search field. Um, if you have put too many, you're gonna see a cutoff here. Um, indicating that you've put too many words, it's gonna stop you. And so you wanna take that into consideration and maybe, you know, relook at some of the words and kind of take out something. Um, but like I said, you have inspiration here and then you have styles. So with the styles, you can tell Canva to surprise you with what those that style is going to be. You can select photo, drawing, 3D, or painting. Okay, and now they have concept pattern and concept art. Those two are new. All right, so I'm going to select, I kind of like the 3D. Once you have pasted or typed in your prompt, you can click on generate image. You're gonna get four images just like you do in CF Spark. You're gonna get four images that are going to generate here. And while we're waiting on that, we'll look back over and see if that image has shown up yet. Just so you can see the difference. Okay, so the difference here, this one says open. That's gonna be a key indicator that it's up under my creations, visible for everyone. When you get this little download uh, thingy here, this is to let you know that it's up under your private. So now when we go to, that's the difference between the two. Now when you go to my private downloads, you'll see the image there. No one else will be able to see this image but you, okay? No one will be able to see it but you. <clears throat> so when I now go back to my creations, you will see that that image is not here. That means the public can't see it. All right, let's jump back over to our Canva. Now Canva has generated our four digital images. You just drag over and plop that image right in. You can see that the images are so different than, the images look a little bit different than what uh, Creative CF Spark generated for us. They're not the same. Remember, I told you, regardless if you're using the same prompt as someone else, 
you're not going to get the same the same image okay so i'm just going to drag them over and paste them in or uh drop them in and then you just click on add page and drag and drop add page and drag and drop so now i have four images that have been generated um, or created in cfs uh, in canva based on that prompt that i took from the ai generator okay now you have two tabs now you can either start again which is going to give you a fresh screen not a, a fresh search area over here on the left or you can generate four additional images using that same prompt without having to go in and and go back to the beginning okay you can even add on to your prompt here so if i now say in the style and it may stop me of charlie for water okay we made it then we can say generate more and it's going to give us four additional images based off of that prompt with the addition of in the style of Charlie Bowwater. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up here so I can add four more pages because I'm going to have four more images. So again, you can see for the ones um, that have in the style of Charlie Bowwater, again, it placed an image or a person inside most of the images here. There we go. All right, let me get my slides together. Okay, so those are the four images. That's very pretty. Based off of in the style of Charlie Bowwater. So one, two, three, four, okay? So we're gonna go back to our AI prompt generator. The great thing about CF Spark, um, before I talk about the AI prompt generator again, the great thing is you can just type in whatever you want to. Dog chasing after cat. You don't have to, you know, type a whole lot and ignite. Okay, that's what generates. I can also go here to Canva and I can say start again and I can say dog chasing after a cat. <clears throat> and I'm going to do surprise me this time and generate image. Now, with your prompts, you always want to start out with what's most important to you based on what you want to see. So whatever's most important, you want to put that in the first part of the front, uh, prompt. I was going to say prompt. <laughs> prompt, and then you go down from there in your uh, image description. Okay. All right, so we're almost done here with our four images. And again, you can bring them in however you so choose. And you don't have to take them all. I'm just enlarging them so you guys can see them better, okay? So there's your images. If there's one or two you don't like, you don't have to use them. Just go here and click on delete. Okay. Um, the, the difference between your CF Spark and your Canva is that CF Spark is um, just for generating digital images. You can't add any text. You can't change the look of the image or anything in CF Spark. You can take it to other software that will allow you to edit an image or edit a, a picture, but not in CF Spark. CF Spark is what you see is what you get, and that's pretty much it. Um, 
like I said, these images, once you uh, publish them, they're going to show up either in your creations if you did a um, public uh, public publishing or they're going to show up in your private downloads if you did a private one. OK, um, let's see here in CF in uh, Canva. Canva is going to allow you to add text. You can edit these images, so on and so forth. So if I wanted to come here and edit this image, I would just click on the image and click on edit image. You have all these editing tools over here on your left. You can play with them in your own time. I'm not going to play around with them too much here. You can change the brightness right there or the contrast right on that image. You cannot do this in CF Spark. Okay. Um, you have filters, tools. You can do mock-ups. It's going to place your image inside that cell phone. So if you had a customer or client that you were generating that digital image for and you wanted them to be able to see what it's going to look like on a phone that you were going to place it on for them, then there's your mock-up. Okay. So you can play around with these. This is really a great um, feature inside Canva. This is not something that you can do in CF Spark. CF Spark is just for generating the digital image. Okay. You can also flip the image, horizontal, vertical, and you can also animate it, okay? Um, you can change coloring if you need to. So if I were to edit this image, and let's say, hold on one second. If I had like a um, background color and then I wanted to put my image on top of that background color, then I would be able to um, do that. I'm going to undo, but just to show you that you can play around with color. So I'm going to crop this. That's as far as I'm going to be able to take it. So I kind of moved it over a little bit instead of having it center. You can do that. But in order to do any type of editing, you have to actually click on the image. So like I'm here, but in order to make any changes, I would have to actually click on the image. So that's very important. If you want to add text, you have all these options over here. You can design, you can um, add other elements to this image. You can add uploaded images that you may have created that you wanna um, add to your artwork. You can add text, you can add a text box, or you can use some of these pre um, done ones for you. So if I wanted to put sweet on there, I can just drag it over. Okay, so that's now a part of my image. Again, Canva is really great at designing out your digital images. Um, CF Spark is going to only generate the digital image for you. So you get a little bit more uh, creative flow inside of Canva, okay? But that's what it's for. It's not just for digital images, all right? Once you have, um, let's say you didn't like that prompt, all you have to do is click on generate prompt and AI prompt generator, you can just change it. So here we got year 2040, Paris, urban futuristic, ultra realistic, ultra detail, blah, 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 blah. You just copy it. Now, I'm going to go over here to create CF Spark. <clears throat> I'm going to change this to year 2060 instead of 2040 and see what we get. So you don't have to keep that prompt the same. You can change any of these words that you so choose. And I know you're saying 2060 is not here, but neither was 2040, and we did say futuristic. So that's what it's going to base that image off of. Okay. And the same thing if we go over to Canva. Now, once you click on text to get back to your text to image, you just click on text to image. 
start again. And then you paste that prompt in or type your prompt in. Again, we're gonna type in 2060. And we're gonna say photo and generate. So you can see that they're very similar. One CF Spark, digital image, digital images only. Canva is digital images and you can design out further inside of Canva, depending on what you're trying to do. So I'm gonna just move one of these over, okay? So there's your image. So again, you can type directly into the search field in Canva. You can also type directly into the search field in CF Spark. You do not have to use this AI prompt generator. If you do, you can change up any of the keywords that you so choose. You do not have to keep the keywords as you saw there. So that gives you a feel of how to use CF Spark and also how to use Canva. And so you can determine which one you want to use and when you should use one versus the other. You can also download images from CF Spark and upload them into Canva and get the same, you know, and, and decorate or design out that image from CF Spark into Canva. Okay. So um, don't think that, you know, you can't use these images. Okay. So if I go to my creations, where I downloaded this image, or not download it, but publish this image in CF Spark. All I have to do is just click on it and click download. It's gonna give you a zip file in the bottom left corner. We're gonna click on that. And you have to extract that file. So I'm just gonna click here next to the name and say extract file. And I'm just gonna let it go to my desktop. Now, when I go back to Canva, I could actually get add page and now go to upload, upload files and go to my desktop. So for some reason it went to my downloads instead, but that's fine. And it's going to put the image over <clears throat> on the left side with your other digital images that you've generated. And then you just move it over. All right, let me grab it. Still thinking. All right, so there's the image from CF Spark. This is the image from CF Spark. You can drag the handles to increase the sizing. Okay, so it doesn't just have to be a digital image from. Canva. You can bring the digital images from CF Spark. You can upload, download them, and then upload them into Canva and do the same thing as if you were using um, CF, I mean, as, as if you downloaded it or created it in CF Spark, I mean, in uh, Canva. All right. Now, once you get your digital images in Canva, you can go here and put in a title. So I'm just going to say test tutorial okay and then you click on share once you click on share you're going to select download and then it shows you that there's 13 pages and we're just going to and it's going to show you the size 940 by 788 png and you click download once it's completed downloading, it's going to download and it's going to show a zip file in the bottom left corner. 
which we'll see here in just a moment. And there we go, our test tutorial. When I click on that, again, these are our images. You do have to extract them. Click on extract, and we're gonna put it in our download folder. And now, when I open up my downloads, you're going to see the zip file, which looks like a zipper, <clears throat> right here. And then you're gonna see the extracted one, which looks like an open folder. That's the file you want. So you double click on that, and you double click on your image. And now you have those images that you created from Canva. Okay. All right, guys, that is it. I wanted to take the time out because some people don't know that you can also create digital images inside of Canva. So I wanted to kind of kill two birds with one stone, focus a little bit on the new changes in CF Spark and how you can download these to your uh, pri your images to your private downloads so that people cannot download download your work. Um, and then also how um, when people do download your work, if they don't have a CF Spark account, then um, they do have to pay for the image. But anyone, as long as you're putting these in public, anyone can download your images, okay? And to avoid that now, you just want to publish them to or download them to your private folder, okay? All right, so that is pretty much it, guys. I think I've answered most of the questions that I get in regards to CF Spark, and also now you know how to generate your images inside of uh, Canva. And just remember that Canva is only going to allow you so many words. I'm not sure of the number of words, um, but or no, that it will allow you in the prompt. But like I said, if I go to, I'm just gonna bring up one of my other AI generators. This is Playground AI. And I'm gonna come down here and grab one of these digital images that I've generated that has a long prompt. Let's try this one. I think this one is kind of long. So I'm gonna copy this prompt and I'm gonna take it over to Canva. Go back to text to image. I'm gonna paste that prompt in and you're gonna see that it cut it off, okay? So when we look at my prompt here, it stopped it at insanely detailed. All this has been taken out, okay? No, it stopped it at beautiful detail. So actually we are right here. It stopped and anything after this, Canva would not take, okay? So you're definitely not gonna get the same image um, not same image, but even the same feel, okay? So what I would do is if I were to generate this, I'm just gonna show you what it's gonna look like. If you just let it cut off wherever the cutoff is, your image is gonna look completely different and not even in the same category as what was generated in Playground AI. So that's our four images using that prompt. And you can see that those are completely different than what we have here, okay? Now you can go in and say, okay, I want an old time films, beautiful, subtle gold and black, fractal gems, 
American pinup girl with a head wrap. Um, try to take out some of this stuff and see how much closer you get. And let's try generate more and see what we get. But again, you're going to be limited to the number of characters. You're, you're not limited to the number of characters in Sea of Spark. So that's an advantage for Sea of Spark. But you are currently limited in Canva. I can tell you that Sea of Spark and Canva are constantly changing. So you can see we got a little bit closer to something that, you know, was close to this, but not exactly in the likeness of. So that is that, guys. Um, AI generator, use that. You can play around with the prompts. Oh, this one might be a cool one. Let's see what that one looks like. See what that one look like. It's so hard, guys, to once you get started with these digital images, just forget your life as you knew it. <laughs> I'm sorry, because you're going to be stuck at your computer just generating digital images because it is so addictive. I keep trying to end this tutorial. <laughs> And then something else come, comes up. Uh, while we're waiting on that, I will tell you guys, check out my YouTube channel. I do have a tutorial on Playground AI, which is this software here that generates digital images. I am going to be creating one on Dow E, which you can generate digital images in Playground AI using the uh, Dow E um, model. So I am going to be creating a tutorial on that. But I mean, these these things are just so addictive. Once you get out here and start generating these images. And yesterday I was playing around in um, Mid Journey. And I generated some really cool art in Mid Journey. So later today create a video tutorial on Mid Journey to teach you how to use it. <clears throat> but this one I fell in love with. I created this digital image in Mid Journey. And You know, we're always doing females, so I created some gentlemen. <laughs> Look at those white teeth. He's handsome. So this was done in Playground. This was done in Mid Journey. Okay. So like I said, we're always generating women and little kids. So I decided to do some men in there. And this is one of my favorites. Okay. So like I said, once you get into this digital image thing, guys, there's so much, so many different software programs out there that you can use to create your digital images. Price points are going to be different. Uh, the most expensive I found so far is Mid Journey, but I think it's well worth it because you can see the quality of the images. So don't let that freak you out. You are limited um, in Mid Journey. If you decide to test it out, you are limited on the free version of 25 dig digital images. After 25 digital images you've generated, you have to decide to purchase it. They don't let you go past 25 images, so use those 25 wisely. Um, in Playground AI, um, I actually chose the upper price point, so I have unlimited downloads or digital images that I can generate in um, Playground AI using Stable Diffusion. Dow E, I sound, signed up for it and um, I think you get 800 digital images per month. You can generate 800 digital images under Dow E. But I will be talking about Dow E in another tutorial. So just wanted to show you those guys that there are so many different 
um, AI generators out there or AI software. Um, and so don't feel like CF Spark or Canva is it. I'm just showing you the different ones so you can get a feel for, you know, what do you want to do? You know, what, what do you want to go with? Because there's so many options out there. All right. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. If you're currently following me uh, via Facebook uh, under Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters, then guys, thank you so much for the support that you show via my Facebook. I will link my Facebook um, group in this below this video. So if you would like to uh, join my Facebook group, Ken Doris's Cricket and Creative Crafters, you can feel free to do so. She's a cutie. Um, and if you're currently subscribed to my YouTube channel, I want to thank you guys so much for subscribing to my YouTube channel. I have over 300 plus video tutorials out there on all types of crafts. Um, but if you want to learn about CF Spark in more detail from the beginning to the end, I have another vid video tutorial out there on CF Spark. If you want to learn how to use Playground AI Stable Diffusion, I have a video tutorial on that. And up and coming will be Mid Journey. And uh, if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel and you like my method of teaching, I know this one was a little bit hard because we're going between two different AI generators, CF Spark and Canva. But normally I just focus on one or the other. But I was trying to kill two birds with one stone here. So I do apologize. Um, but if you would like to join or subscribe to my YouTube channel, then feel free to do so. If you like my method of teaching, then please like and share my tutorials with others. All right. All right, guys, that's my story. I'm sticking to it. And you know, my motto is each one reach one so that each one can teach one. And you guys have an amazing day. Bye.